This is Game Chat with Born episode 122. Can PUBG survive the Fallout? Hmm. You found Game Chat with Buona. Welcome to the show. Now here's your host, Buona McCall, with all the gaming news of this week. Uh, by the way, that's me. Greetings, folks, and welcome to episode 122 of Game Chat with Warner. We got a great show lined up for you. Recording a little bit late. Voice is leaving me. <laughs> Recorded a, a video for uh, for Dauntless tonight. I did the Dauntless review, and it ran a little long. Took me a little bit to get some content created and to get the video finalized. But uh, here we are late at night, Wednesday night, Thursday morning. Recording Game Chat with Warner. We got a couple stories to talk about. Big things about Pokemon and Fallout in the news. And we got a couple other things to talk about on top of those. Um, we will be getting this episode up on YouTube. That is the plan. Uh, I couldn't do it last time because in the workflow of Podbean, which is a service that I use, you apparently have to do it while you're publishing. And I didn't want, I didn't want to republish the episode just for the YouTube video. So we're going to try that workflow and see what happens it's probably going to upload a video to YouTube automatically. I don't know if I want that, but uh, we're going to try it out. Spotify will be going soon as well. So we've got a great show lined up for you guys. Episode 122. Let's go. And for our first story, we're going to talk about Pokemon and uh, Pokemon Company. And of course, Nintendo. Bunch of announcements were made. Oh my goodness, on the 30th, which was, uh, uh, I think it was uh, actually, yeah, it was today. I would say that yesterday because it's like 2 a.m. here, but it was yesterday. Pokemon Quest and Pokemon Let's Go, two new titles which were announced. Very, very mobile-focused solutions from Pokemon Company. Uh, Pokemon Quest is a voxel-based game. If you look at it, it's like, what is this, Pokemon? It's a very simplified version of Pokemon, uh, which will be running on Switch and Android and iOS, uh, which is out for Switch today, but it will be on Android and iOS later. And it's one of those mobile type games where you can do things and play for an hour or so, and then you just let things run in the background. You come back and check things. So it's got battles, um, and it's got like a very, very Minecraft looking voxel square interface for all your Pokemon. Uh, so I don't know if I would get into this. Uh, I, I'd have to look more into it, but uh, it seems like a very, very casualized, if, if you can even do that to Pokemon, a more casualized uh, experience. Uh, let me see if I can find a good, uh, a good description here. It says, in Pokemon Quest, your journey takes you to Tumble Cube Island. Tumble Cube. Yes. A bizarre region where voxel-style Pokemon roam free you sail off to this new land looking for treasure and, of course, new Pokemon to aid you in your journey. From the get-go, you set up a customizable base camp and slowly explore the many areas of the island, finding an array of familiar faces in cube form. It's light on story, but you have quite a bit going on. So this is uh, some quotes from, from over here in Polygon. They got some details about it over there. And the other title which is split into two, like, you know, they do with Pokemon. They got red and blue and sun and moon. This one's called Pokemon Let's Go, um, which is seems to be a more traditional uh, Pokemon than uh, what I just described earlier. Pokemon Let's Go is is kind of got the story thing going on, but but you catch Pokemon using the mechanics of Pokemon Go by tossing a ball. It's not lo no longer a battle situation it's going to be sixty dollars sixty dollars uh, it's going to launch on november 16th exclusively on the switch and one of the cool things is that you'll be able to transfer the pokemons you catch in pokemon go to the switch via bluetooth so that'll be some some kind of an integration that's going on between the two titles um and there's going to have two versions the pokemon let's go pikachu and pokemon let's go eevee and these will be your starter pokemon for each version respectively it's going to be 151 pokemon available in the game um though their aloland forms will also appear and i'm reading that correct correctly um players will be able to trade pokemon from their let's go games via local wireless and wi-fi there will however be no breeding and no 
eggs. Um, according to this article over at Polygon, the biggest difference between the game's original and Pokemon Let's Go is the catching system. So it's going to be a pretty robust Pokemon game, much more than Pokemon Quest. But they've got some peripherals. This is Nintendo. Of course, they got peripherals. They've got a Pokeball that you can press a button and simulate the throwing mechanic. Yeah. Or you can use your Joy-Con to do the same thing. Yeah. To throw the ball to catch the Pokemon. And you'll probably be doing the same mechanics as I described earlier as Pokemon Go. So if you play Pokemon Go, they're pretty much taking that mechanic and throwing it in the Pokemon game. And you've got a miniature Pokemon game. So I guess the question becomes, what about the traditional RPG Pokemon? They did give us a date range. Second half of 2019. Yes. The second half of 2019, which essentially is 2020. For the Pokemon RPG version that everybody's looking forward to for the Switch. I got to say, but Pokemon Let's Go is kind of that, but it's not quite. Not quite. Still got some Pokemon Go remnants to it. Got a kind of a different art style. I don't know. It's more of a... Um, I guess it, according to this article, they're going to tie it more to the cartoon anime. Uh, and you're going to have people like Team Rocket and all kinds of stuff, which is not going to be probably on the on the RPG version, which is coming out in 2019, a.k.a. 2020. $60, again, Pokemon Let's Go, the both the Pikachu and Eevee versions, on top of the Pokemon Quest title, both announced by Nintendo and Pokemon Company. Check it out, guys. Over on Polygon, they got the details about both of these titles. Good time to be a Pokemon fan. And for our next story, we're going to talk about Fallout 76, the new Fallout title announced by Bethesda today. Uh, it was kind of an interesting development with that because they had this teaser video going on Twitch for many, many hours and nothing was going on. And they finally released the teaser trailer for Fallout 76. And we really don't know a whole lot about it. Uh, there was a couple of things that, that people have looked over the video with. They saw that the date is October 27, 21. 02, five years behind schedule. So apparently it's going to be 20 years after the 2077 apocalypse and a few years before Fallout 1. But people are speculating that it will not be a traditional RPG Fallout, that it may be a multiplayer online based game. Now, this particular premise in this in this uh, teaser is talking about the idea of rebuilding civilization after the apocalypse. So people are speculating that we're going to have a survival builder like Rust or Conan Exiles, etc. in the Fallout universe. Hmm. Hmm. Is that going to be the case? I mean, it's pure speculation. Nobody knows what's going to happen. Either way, I am. I am both intrigued and a little bit uh, confused and excited at the same time. Uh, I love the Fallout universe. Uh, Fallout 4 was like, what, what, 2015? A few years ago, three years ago. I liked it. It was a good game to me. People really, really hammered that it didn't have good RPG elements. But personally, I really enjoyed the game and got a lot of fun hours out of it. I still go back to it to this day and play it and do some stupid stuff like I tend to do with Bethesda titles, even Skyrim. I don't even like Skyrim, but I'll go in there and load up a bunch of mods and just float around and shoot nuclear guns everywhere. Um, well, that, no, that's Fallout. I'll what i have it's like these just big explosions and all kinds of crazy stuff that I did in, <laughs> in skyrim um so vault 76 is one of vault tech's control vaults um so it doesn't i don't know it's not going to fit into the same storyline as the other stuff so they do have kind of free reign to kind of take it into a different direction um i don't know what they're gonna do we gotta wait till e3 we're gonna learn more at e3 this year in a couple weeks about what this Fallout 76 is all about. And no, it's not Soldier 76. Shut up. Don't even think about Overwatch. Um, what I tweeted, well, something was kind of funny, is that I was hoping that you had 76 days to build a, a working civilization. Or Bethesda will release a Switch remaster <laughs> of Fallout for $150. Oh, you had to be there. It was so funny. Check it out, guys. Over at rstechnica.com. They got the details. Fallout 76 teaser release. What is it going to be? I don't know. And for our next story from the department of the what department, Microsoft has laid off Xbox support staff in favor of volunteers. Are you kidding me? I read this article and I didn't believe it. 
but apparently they have laid off a sizable amount of their support staff earlier this month, replacing them with volunteer Xbox fans. According to two sources on this article in Polygon, around 12 people lost their jobs earlier this month. The team that worked with direct support inquiries made via the popular Twitter account Xbox Support. They were employed by a company called Affirma Consulting, but mainly worked in Microsoft offices. They also worked with volunteer members of the public called Xbox Ambassadors. So what Microsoft is going to do is get some of these former Xbox support people that they laid off to train train the xbox ambassadors which are normal people like you and i who just happen to really really love xbox but i don't think they're getting paid these is a volunteer basis now i got some experience with this because that's how i started with just not tv now known as twitch i uh i started as a volunteer i was volunteer admin support and i did very similar stuff without a paycheck uh that similar role right now is pretty much a paid role at twitch but uh back then i did a support role um, but I've never heard of Mark. I've never, I mean, back then, Justin, not TV and Twitch didn't fire people and replace them with us as Twitch admins. <laughs> this, this is the part that kind of confuses me. They actually fired this consulting company. I guess they weren't doing a good enough job. I mean, if you think about it, maybe the Xbox ambassadors, the Xbox ambassadors did a better job on social media, answering questions than the actual paid people. Huh? Makes you think, huh? Hmm. The Microsoft Xbox support Twitter account has more than a million followers. And prior to May 18th, the account, the account directly responded to dozens of inquiries per day, amounting to more than 2.9 million tweets. My goodness. In recent weeks, the, the, the account that has mostly, mostly restricted itself to retweeting messages from the Xbox ambassadors account. Man, tweets sent to Xbox support are now being handled by ambassadors. Maybe I'm not understanding what ambassadors are. I'm just assuming they're normal Joe Schmoes. You know, normal people that may, may be content providers, maybe, uh, you know, like like I'm a Warframe partner. You know, that's what I'm thinking, they're like an Xbox ambassador. Maybe they get invited out to Seattle every now and then. Maybe they get some swag, they give away some codes and stuff like that. But I don't think they're actually paid. And that's the key point here. I don't think they're actually paid. I think Microsoft's going to save some money by hiring these volunteers rather than... <laughs> Oh, man. By hiring these volunteers rather than hiring or rather than paying support staff. Interesting article. Check it out, guys. Everyone probably going to get the details. Microsoft lays off Twitter support in favor of volunteers. And for our final story, this one's a little bit, man, this can get a little bit soapboxy. This has to do with PUBG and Epic Games and the whole battle royale. Who started who and what started what and who's copying what? PUBG Corp to sue Epic Games over Fortnite similarities. Now, this I even wrote a blog post over on Boyna.tv slash blog. You can check it out about this a long time ago. And how PUBG Corporation is claiming that Fortnite is copying the Battle Royale genre. And PUBG believes that they actually own the rights to that game mode. So many things wrong with that that I'll talk about in a second, but let's get to the article here. Um, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds, which is the battle royale game we're talking about, developers PUBG Corp have filed a copyright suit against Fortnite Battle Royale Studio Epic Games. The Korea Times Korea Times reports PUBG Corp claims that Fortnite Battle Royale violates their copyright, while the finer point the finer points of the korean case have not been yet made public record this could be the further action that they threatened last september which i wrote about in my blog post so yeah fortnite i'm sorry PUBG has been on the tear they actually sued some other companies one company notoriously for a frying pan in the game now that was kind of a uh, edge case that everybody likes to point out but let's get to the nitty-gritty PUBG claims that games, last man standing games, they have to jump out of an airplane and have a reducing battleground is their copyright. So if anybody else does that, if anybody else does that, they're going to violate their copyright. Anybody. Also, they they pointed out that the guns, this is the, this is the obnoxious part. All these things have some sort of an obnoxious part. They claim that the guns used by Fortnite are way too similar 
to the guns used in PUBG. Now, if you know what I know, and you probably got a bit of common sense, you know that all of these guns in question are based on real guns, which are not copyrightable. For some reason, PUBG believes that they own guns. Okay, so let's talk about this a little bit. I mean, we, 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 we're witnessing the birth of kind of a semi-genre slash game mode. We saw it with MOBAs, with League of Legends. We saw it with uh, Valve's Dota 2, with Heroes of New Earth, uh, with Heroes of the Storm, with Smite. That genre was kind of birthed out of that mod that came from Warcraft, right? It was a little bit of a legal shuffle and scuffle with... Uh, with uh, Blizzard and Valve, but that was more around assets that were being used because the Dota 2 stuff is based on actual Warcraft characters. So it didn't have much to do with the mode. It had to do, to do with the assets that were used. Same is true for other genres that have been birthed over the years. It's like there have been little scuffles and lawsuits. You know, Quake and Unreal. Uh, i just go back to Unreal again. You know, back in the day, they had very similar games. They had similar modes. And I don't think it came down to courtroom copyright battles. So there's a case where PUBG is putting itself on a pedestal and saying that we did this, we built this, and you're copying us. So let's be frank and real and everything. That's what happens in gaming everywhere. A particular formula works, whether it be shooters, first-person shooters for a long time were very similar. They had free-for-all, they had team deathmatch, they had conquest, and they even had... Uh, kill confirmed you know that was like the formula MOBAs same type of deal three lanes you try to kill each other bases there's towers there's the abilities there's a shop all these things all these aspects make up the genre RPGs action RPGs Diablo one of the originators and you see a bunch of people even Path of Exile Marvel Heroes uh, Lost Ark coming out from the from the east um, all types of stuff now I'm missing titles so I apologize these are how genres are born. They copy each other. This is what happens. They take elements of a game, not everything. They take parts of it, and they incorporate it in their own style, right? Their own style, and they present it in a different fashion to try to give a game, gamers a unique opportunity to try this out. And that helps us because it forces both studios to innovate and differentiate themselves from each other. So they don't just do a carbon copy. Now, if you look at Battle Royale, Fortnite Battle Royale and PUBG, any gamer knows that you can tell them. You can tell, you can tell the difference. They're ma- when you play the games, they're massively different. Sure, you drop from an airplane and there's a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a decreasing circle, but that's where it ends. Fortnite has a different looting system. Fortnite has building. Fortnite has all these wacky deployables and stuff that you can have that, that PUBG doesn't have. Um... And the fact that PUBG, frankly, has sour grapes over this is kind of childish because Fortnite is taking the bigger piece of the pie. Now, one of the things they claimed back in September is that Fortnite Epic, I should say, they had a competitive advantage because they own the Unreal Engine, which uh, Player Unknown's Battlegrounds is using. And they say that that's unfair because they own the engine. They'll be able to, uh, to to do better optimization. They'll be able to, uh, to to produce a better experience, and potentially they could sabotage player unknowns battlegrounds, which I think is absurd. But let me get this straight. Uh, let's just let's just be clear here. So, Epic owns Unreal. They made it. They put a lot of work into it. They should benefit from it. They really should. They should. They should reap the benefits. They have licensing costs, of course, but they should be able to make games too. They, they Epic never stopped making games, so you can't tell them not to make games because they make the engine that your game is using. Because you can make your own engine, you have to buy the license of theirs. Nobody signed anything and said we're not going to make a battle royale game. And a lot of companies is not just Epic. A lot of other companies, you know, we talked about Radical Heights closing with. Um, with Cliffy B Studio closing a few weeks ago, you know, they were going to make a battle royale game. There's like 20 of them now. They're just, they're, they're popping up. They're cropping up. And it's a big deal. It's got the, uh, it's got the eyes and ears of the gaming, 
that gaming demographic that is throwing many, many, many thousands of dollars at games has got their attention. And they're trying to soak up all those billions of dollars. That's what this is about. This is about money. This isn't about copyright. This isn't about, you know, who did what for us, who did what first. Player on those battlegrounds wants more money. And there's there's kind of a, a limit, you know. You know, you need money in the business. You need to make money. You need to continue to make money. You need to make a profit. They're making a killing. With their loot boxes and all the other stuff they're doing, they're making a killing. So is Fortnite. How much of this is greed? How much is like, well, you're making seven billion, we're making five billion, we want your seven as well. And to that, I really can't sympathize with PUBG. I gotta side with Fortnite in this. I don't care what they say. Fortnite to me feels very different from PUBG. To the, to the point to where some people don't play it. If they copy so much, don't you think every PUBG player will want to play Fortnite? That's not the case. It's definitely not the case. So this is a laughable lawsuit, which I hope gets laughed out of court. And let's get this straight. This has happened to Epic before. They have been sued by people who own their engine. And you know what? They can rescind their license and basically kill the company if they want to. Epic can go, oh, y'all want to talk trash? You can't use our light. You can't use our engine anymore. Stop sales. Cancel Christmas. Go write your own engine. You can't use our engine anymore. They can do that. They are well within their legal rights to do that. And PUBG has the, the audacity to basically dare them to do that. That's what's going. This is a dare. It's like, oh, you're not going to do that. Apparently because they make so much money from listen, Epic is they fart money every morning. There's this it's just thousands of dollar bills that just fly out of their butt every morning. And it is ridiculous to think that they're going to flinch at PUBG saying, Oh, you need our money more than you you know. It, no, no. So this is this is a laughable lawsuit. I really lost respect. I haven't played PUBG in years. I don't even want to play it because of this. It is one of those things where it it makes you not want the company to 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 win these lawsuits. And, you know, it's kind of sad, but you don't want to see them succeed. And I don't want to I don't want to ever feel like that. But it's like you don't want to root for them. Because they're doing stuff like this, they're being evil. Check it out, guys. Over on Rock Paper Shotgun, they got the details about PUBG suing Fortnite because they think they copied Battle Royale. Come on, man. Stop being ridiculous. And that concludes episode 122 of Game Chat 1. I hope you all could stand my my losing my voice and the coughs and everything. The late night recording. Please follow my stream. I have a live stream. We stream every day except Wednesdays and Sundays over at twitch.tv slash Buona. I also have a website at Buona.tv, which has my podcast up there now and my blog, Buona.tv. You can go check it out there. We're also on Twitter, twitter.com slash Buona. Also on Instagram, Instagram dot com slash buona look at all these slash buonas coming up man it's pretty cool pretty cool to get your branding right you guys come up with a name that you're going to stick with if you're going to do some branding <laughs> let me tell you you don't want to start with youtube.com slash io buffer and then have to change it to youtube.com slash buona as an alias you know later on uh the early buona the mistakes you made in life you are such a character, sir. So, yeah, guys, thanks so much for listening to the episode. We're going to be publishing this. This is early Thursday morning, co coming up at like 4 or 5 a.m. Oh, man, I got a morning stream to do tomorrow. We usually stream at 10 a.m. Eastern to 2 p.m. Also at 8 p.m. To, to 10 p.m. I'm sorry, 8 p.m. To, to 12 a.m. Every single night except Wednesdays and Saturdays. Check out my newest video. I put up a uh, Dauntless video review. Uh, it's about eight minutes long, but I put a lot of work into it. Um, I made some mistakes. I had to redo some stuff, you know, so it took a little bit of time. But it's now up on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash one. And please follow that and click the bell. I like to say that in there. Click the bell so you can be notified. Same on Twitch. If you click the follow button, click the bell. <laughs> click the bell. We're also on Discord, guys. Discord.gg slash one. Join our Discord. We're there every day talking about all types of games and topics and technology, what have you. I'll see you guys next week. Take care. Oh, yes, we have our subathon coming up this Saturday. 12 hours of fun. We're going to be really, really pushing for more subs on Twitch. This is my full time job, and I got to pay the bills. All right, boys and girls, I'll see you all next week. Take care. GG's. Have a great day. 
and I'll see you next time. Hey guys, thanks for watching the video. Please comment, like, subscribe, and all that good stuff. And make sure you click the bell to be notified. Otherwise, you ain't gonna see this video. Wait, how did you see this video? Um, okay, bye.